Who is going to take care of the wives? Why God created us? What this cosmic energy? The religion is the solution for the things happening all around the world. Jihad does not mean any war fought by any Muslim. Jihad basically means to strive to struggle. The Hindus and the Muslims will be united. He is not cosmic energy, he is more superior than that. Quran gives you the solution to the problem of humankind. Not that we shall despise each other. That according to Japan, India will be the superpower of the world. We will be a superpower, we will be far superior to the American. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ar rasulillah wa ala ali wa sabi ajmain, amma abad, auzu billahi min shaitani rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim, wa man ahasanu kawla min man da'il allahi, wa amli salihan, kawla inda ni min muslimin, rabbi shuali sadri, wa silli amri, wa ahlul ugdata min lisani yafkahu kawli. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings, assalamu alaikum, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. You're most welcome to ask any questions on Islam and comparative religion or the propagation of Islam. Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum assalam, brother. Last week, uh, there was an event which took place in Denmark displaying a cartoon, and there is a wide protest going across the globe in, uh, against uh, whatever was displayed of uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. How should we Muslim respond to this particular when it is catching like a fire across the globe? There was an event which took place earlier a few months back in Denmark which was repeated in the press a few weeks back against the Prophet. The background of it is that 30th of September, one of the Danish newspapers, it published 12 cartoons, 12 caricatures of Prophet Muhammad which was not in the right spirit, was on the negative side. And many of them were made to defame him. One of them showing him wearing a turban in the way of a time bomb and along with ladies around him, etc. So this was published on the 30th of September. After it was published, about three weeks later, on the 20th of October, the ambassadors of Muslim countries in Denmark and the other Muslim religious people, they approached the Prime Minister and told him what is happening is wrong and there should be an apology and we should take back all these things, which did not give a good positive response. After that, there were people who tried to tell them that this is wrong. Later on, on 20th of January, these 12 caricatures, 12 cartoons depicting Prophet Muhammad in the negative manner, showing me the religion of terrorism, carrying a sword, along with women wearing a time bomb on his head, etc. All these things was reprinted in a Norway newspaper. In the Denmark, it was mainly to local people in that language. Then the whole issue took place and there was a big hue and cry in the Muslim world. As far as the question is concerned that how should the Muslims respond to this thing, these things have taken place in the past also. Such things, whether it be Salman Rajdi, whether it be Taskim al-Nasreen, whether it be in USA, whether it be abusing the Prophet. And as you may be aware that according to Time magazine report which came on the 16th of April 1979, in a span of 150 years, from 1800 to 1950, more than 60,000 books have written against Islam. That means more than one book a day was written against Islam in a span of 150 years before. After 9-11, it has reached epidemic levels. Maybe several books are written every day and several articles are coming every day throughout the world, whether on the internet, whether it be on the newspaper, whether it be on satellite channels, whether it be in the form of books or pamphlets. And this has reached epidemic levels. So what should be the response of the Muslims when such articles come or such thing comes in the media, whether it be in the television, whether it be the print media, etc. Someone abusing the Prophet or defaming the Prophet. What should be the Muslim stance? And we find people giving different opinions. As far as I'm concerned, my opinion is that broadly, if you categorize the way the Muslim should respond to such defamation and such allegations against Islam, especially the Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, broadly I can categorize it in six different categories. How can you respond? The first way is replying it in the media. Trying to clarify the misconception. And media today, number one best media is the television satellite channel. Then can be the print media, newspapers, magazines. Then can be in the form of pamphlets, can be in the form of books, internet. So number one is the print media, which is the most important. Any Muslim in any part of the world, whether this thing takes place in a Muslim country or non-Muslim country, this allegation against the Prophet or defamation of the Prophet takes place in any part of the world, the first three, four categories can be adopted by any Muslim, whether living in a Muslim country or non-Muslim country. 
So the first four strategies which are more important can be adopted by anyone, anywhere, irrespective whether the allegation has taken place in this country or outside, whether Muslim or non-Muslim country. So first is the media. Number two can be a peaceful demonstration of protest, whether in a form of a congregation, whether giving a letter to the embassy of that country where this thing has taken place. If it's Denmark, then you can have a peaceful protest again what has happened and telling the Prime Minister of Denmark that take action against that newspaper, whatever it is. It is a peaceful protest, whether the audience can be few hundred, few thousand, few hundred thousand, that depends. A peaceful protest. This anyone can do, any Muslim can do, any part of the world. The third type of reaction that can take place from the Muslim which is positive, it can be a legal action. A legal action. For example, if you can legally pull the defaulters to court and sue them, that's a good way of such things not happening. For example, in USA there's an organization by the name of CARE, C-A-I-R, which is a very good Muslim organization which picks up these issues. And just to give an example, you may be aware of the Nike company, also called as Nike, N-I-K-E, very famous company which makes sports goods, t-shirts, shoes, etc. And they had made a shoe having some Islamic inscription on it or mentioning Allah at the rear side. So you looked from behind, Allah was inscribed or it was put at the part of the shoe which is the defamation. So what they did, that they immediately sued them. And to take the suit file, there was an outside commitment between them. That fine, they paid something 17 million dollars, somewhat similar. I think it's 17 million dollars. And they said, we'll give it to the Muslim community, they can utilize the way they want. So they utilize the money to make parks for the Muslims or Muslim education, whatever they did. So this care company, or Muslim organization, filed a suit. I don't think so, it went into the court because they were afraid the suit would be too high. So they had outside settlement. Whatever it is, whether the court asked them to pay a compensation, outside settlement, it was somewhere close to 17 million dollars, which is, mashallah, very big amount. Very big amount, maybe, you know, more than 80 crores of rupees, imagine. Just for that one act. And they removed the shoes. Main act was, the shoes was removed, it wasn't manufactured. So legal action. So if anything happens, though you can think you can go to the court of law. But in certain countries, suing doesn't work in India. If you sue it, hardly you'll come to any conclusion. The law is so that the case may run for 10 years, 20 years. So depending upon the country, in USA the laws are very strict, copyright laws are strict, suing laws are strict. So depending upon the situation, so as far as the first and second strategy can be done anywhere in the world, that is by media replying, verifying the misconception, writing letters, printing books, what is this wrong, what is the right picture of the Prophet and Islam. Number two is a peaceful protest. Number three is legal action, whatever way you can, if it's practical in that country. Even if it's not practical, at least make an effort to see if you can get the person to task. The fourth type of strategy is using economic pressure or business pressure, which may not be applicable again throughout the world. But if you know that by boycotting certain goods of that country where this act has taken place, if act takes place in the country, or that country per se, the prime minister is condoning it, not condemning it. That means he's part and parcel to it. Fine? So you boycott that. Like as you know, what happened in the Gulf country, many of the people, when the Gulf War took place, they boycotted all the American goods, and there was a big loss as far as to America was concerned. And this was an economic embargo or an economic boycott, which no one can object. Internally, people do it. But depending, suppose if I say here that boycott certain goods in America where the percentage of Muslim using is small, so it will be a waste of time. If it's causing an impact and damage to the economy, do it. That is the fourth strategy. The fifth can be a political action. Political action means the Muslim countries themselves, they take a stance that now they on a political level, they tell the prime minister of that country that this has to stop, otherwise we will stop your embassy in our country, we will take back our ambassador, whatever it is. So that is the fifth strategy that can be done on a political level, directly. The prime minister talking among themselves, the president talking among themselves on a political level that they should stop, they should be apologized, otherwise political boycott will take place. And the last and the sixth is a demonstration or any act with force. For example, people may do something and may burn a figgy, may pelt stone at the embassy. Some people may take a bomb and blast, etc., which is happening, which as far as the first five are concerned, there's no problem. 
no one will object to. Even the people doing it, they can't object why. If it's freedom of speech, then we have a freedom to reply on the media. So no one, even if he's the enemy, if he writes against the prophet and if you reply in the media, he can't object it is wrong. Point number two, peaceful demonstration, no one can object. You wrote against, it is our freedom of speech. We are coming there and we are objecting to it. Peaceful way, handing a letter. No one, not even the worst enemy of Islam can object. No country can object to the second strategy. First, second. Third is boycotting the goods. It's my choice. I don't want to have your goods. I don't have American products. I don't have Danish products. It's my choice. No one can object. Fourth, legal action. I'm taking legal action. Whether the court punishes or gives them a compensation, that's your problem. But no one can object on a suit being filed. Fifth is political. The political party is putting a pressure, which no one again can object. Sixth, violence or force, people can object. As far as the sixth category is concerned of using force, part of it on the lower level, I would not mind depending upon the level of defamation, like burning a flag. May be useful, may not be useful, but no objection. As far as force is concerned, the sixth category, different opinion. But the last one, catching a foreigner of that country, a citizen of the country, taking him as an hostage or killing him, this Islam prohibits. Taking an American because he had done that, now I will kill him or I'll take a bomb and blast, this Islam prohibits. So as far as the first five categories which I spoke about, strategies, neither Islam will object, neither non-Muslim will object. The sixth category, little bit forced, burning a flag, burning a FAG, most people will not object and Islam also, you cannot say it's totally haram. But in the sixth category, higher level, using force and catching an innocent person and killing, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, that if anyone kills any other human being, unless it be for murder or creating mischief in the land, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. If you kill any human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder or for creating mischief, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. And if you save any human being, you have saved the whole of humanity. So if you catch the person who is involved in that act, then it may be possible. But you're catching an innocent citizen of some country, this is totally prohibited in Islam. If you catch the person who's done that crime, and if it's the Islamic country, give him the punishment, what Islamic law says, I've got no problem. So this is the normal way a Muslim can react. Don't we all 